Hey everybody, welcome to Planet Coaster College. This is just a quick video about paths, and by that I don't mean the basic path mechanic in-game and how to use it, nor do I mean making path layouts in parks as a whole. I'm talking about creating these fluid smooth plazas and path areas in parks. Uh, plazas that aren't square and paths that are actually wide and very heavily detailed and set you up in this sort of adventurous path instead of just a simple small trail. And to be quite honest, I actually want to look at a few real life parks first to kind of explain what I mean by this for those of you who aren't really too sure what the hell I'm actually on about right now. Because one of the most important things that I would say you should keep in mind while building paths in Planet Coaster is to not do it the way that the path system wants you to do it. Uh, the path system in Planet Coaster is very much created around creating these trails, sort of these small paths that go through the park. Whereas in real life you very often see that path systems exist as these very large wide open spaces. In fact, Planet Coaster kind of creates this mentality of paths are going through your park as the places that people can actually walk on, but in reality paths are very often just everywhere. Like path is the default state of a theme park and anything that isn't path is creating these areas between the path areas like trees, planters, uh, buildings, rides and roller coasters. And this is the mentality that I really want to get around in this game and what I think is very important if you want to get that fluid, smooth, realistic park layout. And I'll basically be talking about how you want to achieve this in game. And a couple of examples that I think can show this pretty well. Uh, this one is uh, Tivoli in Denmark. It's a super small park and it's definitely not your standard fare in that sense. Uh, but even then you can see that a lot of wide open spaces are created with these paths and the only thing that that isn't path are these areas where there are planters in between the paths or where there are rides or buildings. Sure there are some areas of course reserved for nature and there are some trails as well but especially alongside the most important buildings and all of the rides in this area it's just wide very smoothly curving plazas and the same goes for an American park, like a quintessential American park like Cedar Point, uh, which isn't known for its heavy theming, it's really just about the roller coasters, but even still the park has very wide paths, and especially if you go to the entrance area, you'll see that paths are everywhere, except for those places which are just pavilions or buildings or rides. And I think you can definitely tell this in all of the Disney parks as well, if you look at Epcot, for instance, which is very well known for its landscaping, it still has those widely curving paths, which aren't just small trails in the roller coaster tycoon one sense, uh, but are really just wider open spaces with these planters in between. And that is the kind of layout uh, that I would like to move to in Planet Coaster as well. Now, of course, a very quick disclaimer, this isn't something you have to do. Uh, there are definitely some parks just around small asphalt paths and uh, this is definitely not how you should be doing all of your paths it's perfectly fine to have like some small shortcuts or small little pathways going around the park uh, but especially in some of your larger areas where you're going to have more people where you're going to have more rides more roller coasters or if you're going for a very planned or compact park look you really want to set up those paths in a very wide uh, smooth way so how do we achieve this uh, well I want to very quickly share some tips in Planet Coaster itself and kind of show you with very quick example how I usually do this kind of stuff and at the end of the video I'll go into a real life example in Kuala Beach or that's not real life. Anyway, um, there are a few keys that are most important to this. The first being Z, which is absolutely important and necessary when it comes to creating smooth uh, splits, I guess, between parts, creating smooth junctions. And um, there's also the control key, which is really important for uh, having not all the paths snap to each other. So you get a bit more freedom as to where all of your paths go. And then there is a trick which I need to be super thankful for uh, to free the bear on Shy Guys World Forum. 
There were a few other people as well who found this trick out, but Free the Bear was the person who posted a tutorial on Shy Guys World on how to smooth out crosses and smooth out any junction really in Planet Coaster. And uh, this basically uh, showed the way in which you can smooth out plazas and junction. And this is probably the biggest game changer recently in terms of path styles in Planet Coaster. And that's something that I'll talk about as well. So without further ado, let's get into a quick example. Okay, so I want to create a sort of curved small plaza with a ride and a few buildings next to it. Um, so what I'm going to start out with is create one half of the plaza. I have no idea what all of these pigeons are doing at the moment. Um, but just create one half, just kind of smoothly curve that out. Um, not really too afraid of making this a very sort of rough sketch of what it's going to look like because once you create all the junctions between the paths you'll see eventually that these paths are going to look pretty different. Uh, that looks good like the first part of the path. Uh, now for the second part I'm going to try to make this a little bit longer and while I hold the Z key I want to connect a path over here and that should more or less already create the basis of my plaza here. Now you'll notice that we end up with this weird little, like, well, it's, it's pretty big actually, this, this weird large grass open area and you can very, very easily tell that these are two separate paths and this is not actually a plaza or anything in the middle. Um, now this is where the control key and especially the smoothing out of junctions is going to come into handy. And before I talk about that too much, I actually want to very quickly recreate the tutorial that Free the Bear posted. Basically what he showed off is um, the following, and I'll turn off angle snap just to get this straight. Uh, once you have some jun some junctions, you can actually smooth out the parts between these junctions uh, by placing a path in the middle, trying to get this as straight as I can, there we go, and then just removing that path. And as you can see, it actually smooths out the junction. Uh, now this was the original tutorial, but you can actually even go further than this and start adding more of these paths alongside the side, and you'll see that Planet Coaster starts gradually just filling out these areas and uh, you can eventually just make a very large uh, curved plazas that way, which is amazing. And that's a way in which you can actually kind of fill up the space between this as well. So basically what I want to do here is I want to get rid of some of these spaces that make this very obviously look like two separate paths and uh, not like an actual plaza. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the width a little bit lower and see if I can actually get in here. Uh, that might actually be a bit of an issue here. Uh, yup, I have an opening. There we go. And let's see if we can actually get one in between here. Uh, as you can tell, you might want to make the junctions a little bit less sharp because that makes it easier to put things in the middle. Uh, but we got it anyway. And now we've got that smoothed out and it looks a little bit more neat now. But obviously this is still looking like two separate paths. Uh, so what I want to start doing is there is no way to fill in this entire area as much as I would love to. It's simply impossible. But what we can do is kind of shape the paths around so that we have these planter areas very similar to how you saw it in Cedar Point and in Tivoli and in Epcot, uh, in which we can put some decorations and some foliage that make the entire area look like a smooth plaza, while at the same time also providing a bit of scenery around it. Mm, I think an extra wide path instead might actually work quite well, and I'll use Control and Z to kind of get a bit of a curve in here, make that a bit more interesting to look at. And at this point, you can very easily still tell that this is one extra path in the middle of two different paths uh, but that's why we start adding uh, some path in the middle here and kind of use that plaza trick to smooth stuff out uh, now this is really a bit of a trial and error process because it is still pretty glitchy as you can tell and especially in some of these very tight corners uh, it can be very difficult and sometimes it even flat out stops working uh, that's actually an important thing to highlight as you can see uh, all of the areas which we start smoothing out turn into one big path piece. And this isn't too much of an issue, uh, like if you remove them you lose a lot of path but you can just instantly redo that. The only thing to keep in mind here is that you can't actually smooth out 
on the borders of these enormous path pieces. I have no idea why uh, this, this entire way of making use of the mechanic is pretty glitchy in itself, uh, but there is just no way to do it. So if we take this corner, for instance, uh, it's on the corner of different big path pieces and there's just no way of smoothing that part out. So that's something you're going to have to keep in mind. I'm trying to get sort of the shape that I'm looking for here on this path here, which isn't quite working. It's kind of annoying. Let's see if we can still do anything there. Actually, I think that might work. There we go. That's pretty much the shape that I'm looking for. And you can imagine that, you know, this is just one small plaza. And I'll dress that up in a little bit. But if this were in the middle of the park, you kind of want to follow the same theme throughout the entire area and to the paths that it's connecting to as well. So imagine there would be a T-split to some different parks or a different part of the park or a roller coaster down here. Uh, that you still want to kind of smooth that out in a very similar sense. Try and get it as smoothly connected to have it very smoothly flow with that path. Maybe something that kind of sticks through on the middle there. And create a bit of a better transition. There we go. Stuff like that. Basically keep the entire path layout fluid. That said, dressing up the paths is a huge part of how your paths are going to look and just to show it off a little bit uh, to show what you can kind of do with these little in-between areas and with the sides of these paths one thing i very often do with my paths as well is uh, decorate them on the side with some sidewalks now this is more of a main street thing but since there are going to be some buildings over here who knows it could be connected to some sort of main street uh, i still want to try something similar here and the way I usually do this is connect like entry points to the outside curves because if you start doing it on the inside curves you can't really keep the path close to the uh, other path um, pretty much on the outside uh, that way you can actually make sure that you stay very close to that earlier path just like this now as soon as you get to some junctions you're gonna have to turn on angle snap uh, that way you can actually snap another junction over here there we go. Now sometimes it doesn't quite want to connect, uh, like over here, the length of the path just isn't really working with the border that I'm trying to maintain. And in, in cases like that you can kind of just make off a new point where it splits off and hopefully you can actually get a decent curve from that. Uh, it's not as bad as it was. So I'll take that and just go through with the rest of it. So now we have the basic paths down and the last work to be done is pretty much the detailing to bring it all together and make it look clean pretty much. Uh, so there are a couple of things that I usually want to do. I want to make my custom curbs, uh, put in some detailing and foliage and maybe some path elements as well. Uh, so I'm going to start out with some of the custom curbs to get rid of this ugly border over here and also the lack of curbs over here. So for this part, I usually just take any piece with a texture I like. Uh, like say for instance, this piece, uh, which has a pretty good top. Uh, so I'll take that and change the color very slightly to something brownish. And this is always the painstaking part, because this is where you're pretty much just going to have to follow the line of the path here. There's not much else to it, and it also just takes a bit of work to actually get everything into place correctly. But once you're done doing that and you've followed the entire line, you do have a very sick custom curb, which allows you to actually cover up for those pretty weird sort of open areas between the in-game paths. There we go, that's pretty much all for that. And you can do very similar things for the curbs on the insides of the paths over here. Um, I sometimes use rocks as well, uh, which work quite well. And to save some time, what you can actually do on these kinds of things is uh, place whatever object in the ground so that you're inside a building place a few rocks and basically then copy that building around so that you can copy the same set of rocks around to save you a little bit of time on rock placement so here i have my rock building ready and all you have to do is ctrl x to copy it like this and basically place it around to get lots of rocks in at a very small area in a very small amount of time there we go, our little makeshift planter areas are pretty much done and now it's time to put some very simple foliage in there. Now because I'm planning to build some buildings over here and put a ride over here, I don't want the foliage in these planters to be too large, really just some decoration for the area and to fill up the space a bit so it doesn't seem too empty out there. Um, but I also don't really want to block any views so I'm just going to go with some very small trees and hopefully that should keep things pretty much in place here. So we have one small tree here. I'm just going to place a couple of smaller bushes around this area as an extra detailing. 
and put some of these very low bushes to get some more texture to these planters as well and see what else we can really add without obstructing too much of the view we do kind of want to have something that gives this area a bit more body now for the buildings i'm just gonna get out some blueprints to give you a very quick idea of how facades are gonna look at the side of this uh, but i kind of want to create a bit of a gallery effect overhanging the uh, sidewalk that i have so far which is gonna end up looking pretty interesting and i'm pretty much just going to take all of these assets from fantasy valley and fill up the space that way all right there we go and you can already kind of see it working like we have the buildings curving we have these facades kind of curving alongside whatever landscape we're going to have around here and uh, we can really see the plaza curving alongside that, that as well and it's a lot less static than if these buildings were just placed alongside one simple path also this plaza kind of gives you the space to look at these buildings we have some interesting foliage going on here as detailing but it doesn't really block your view of the buildings uh, whereas if this were just one simple path or something very straight it would either not be as dynamic or of the or as these buildings sorry uh, or it would just completely block the view of these buildings and not really put a spotlight on them as much as really having a plaza in front of them does and uh, now just to clean things up a little bit i actually want to turn on the curb on the ground path here just to get some extra more detailing in this path on the side here otherwise i would have to do that curb myself and i'm not feeling like it so yeah i'm just gonna turn that on there uh, and actually fix this a little bit because that doesn't look too good more trees around it to give you some more context for how this kind of path would look and obviously in this case it's really just trees on the other side here uh, but in real life it could very well just why am i saying in real life again in in your park it could very well just be more rides over here or another section of the park the point is uh, that everything connects pretty fluidly very smoothly and the paths aren't very obviously paths but they're more in a sense of a theme park, they're everywhere and you can walk just about everywhere, they kind of flow everywhere except for those areas where there are buildings or planters or perhaps some rides if you were to put a ride over here or some more buildings over here. You could very well actually see this being a much more enclosed kind of area with buildings around all the sides of the plaza. Anyway, that is just about the points that I wanted to bring over about that. Now, if it comes to path detail, but that's an entirely different episode in itself. Um, you definitely, of course, want to add some lanterns along the side here as well. Uh, some benches along the path to make everything come to life a little bit more uh, when it comes to these buildings. Uh, putting planters and small trees and all kinds of details in front of them will definitely make them come to life a little bit more as well. And in turn, I think those details uh, make the layout come to life a little bit more as well but that's something that i can much better show off in an existing theme park or a, i guess an existing theme park in planet coaster so i'll show that off in a little bit but this is to give you a very broad idea of what this would look like with all of the path details installed so this is our small tranquil path area and it's pretty much finished state and if you can get a whole section of the park to look like this be it in your main street or a very important part of your park or just something that's very compact with lots of rides and buildings around that's pretty much uh, what you're looking for now for an actual example let's jump into koala beach all right so we're in koala beach for a bit and personally this has always been one of my favorite areas of the park everything is closed at the moment for mostly lag reasons which is also why there aren't any guests in the park yet even though they're currently still coming in but anyway the frame rate is still pretty bad so i'm sorry about that but this is one of my favorite areas because it's it's all pretty much path but it still happens to flow pretty smoothly throughout the park as you can tell there's sort of this flowing layout of the different paths going everywhere uh, but at the same time it's still quite cozy it doesn't manage to become too open by having all of these large planters in the middle with all of this foliage and a lot of this detailing alongside the paths and you'll notice there are different different ways over here of filling up the open spaces between the paths that you inevitably uh, keep so for instance over here i filled it up with some sand and put some details in there uh, for these things there are some railings along the sides with benches and path elements and trees in the middle 
And then over here, alongside the waterfront, we have these rocky sort of elements which are in between these parts where these paths come together and actually these parks or uh, these paths come together pretty awkwardly like they don't connect in very good ways uh, but all of the scenery kind of covers up those issues and makes it all look as if it is actually one large uh, sort of flowing path like that and I guess a very similar thing goes over here where everybody is stampeding to the one right that's open um, but I filled in the areas obviously very differently here uh, with different fences and less detail since this needs to be quite open for the diving coaster. Uh, but it's still that sort of general layout that's true. And the last thing I wanted to show off, and this is not my idea, I wish it was, but this has been existing for quite a while. Uh, these things, if the people aren't exactly walking through them, actually have benches in the middle of them. So people can actually sit on the scenery items. If I select it here, there is a park bench right underneath here and I think the people just aren't tired enough yet to actually sit on them uh, but you can actually have people sit on path elements like that. Just a thing, uh, very quick thing that I just wanted to share. Overall though I think uh, these should be some pretty good examples of how you can actually fill in those spaces in between your paths even if this is a bit of a work in progress and uh, in that way make your paths flow a little bit more smoothly alongside, of course, uh, the general layout of the paths in the first place. So thank you guys for watching this tutorial. I was, I hope it... So anyways, thank you guys for watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful in some kind of way. It's always been something that I've been procrastinating on because it's very difficult to make this kind of tutorial. There are all sorts of things uh, to be considered with paths and I, I still think it's one of the most difficult things to get right in the game. Um, I still hope to focus on the smallest of path details and really making them look better on a very minute detail level kind of tutorial later on. And also I would like to do a tutorial on general park layout paths in the future as well. But for now, this was really just my uh, like randomly put together techniques which I normally use in creating my paths, especially from an in-game standpoint of using the shortcuts and the ways in which you can manipulate the paths to be as smooth as possible. So yeah, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you guys next time.